Hi, Bill from CJ Pony Parts. I'm here with Mike from DEI Products. Now, DEI specializes in products for sound and heat control. Today, he's going to tell us about header wrap and give us an idea of the proper way to install it. Tell us about your products here and why you would want to use this. Sure, Bill. So, um, we're talking about header wrap today, and we make a few different styles of header wrap. Um, we have our basic fiberglass wrap, which is um, uh, we do a heat treated fiberglass and we do a special coating on the glass to help uh, retain the fibers and raise the operating temperature of the glass. Now what is the benefit of wrapping a header? So wrapping a header has a couple different benefits. Um, it initially started out years and years ago with uh, the hot rod market and actually in the aviation side of it. Um, when you wrap the header, you're retaining heat in the pipe, which allows the gas to, to continue, f continue flowing at a higher rate of speed. Okay. Higher rate of speed, better um, uh, scavenging in the cylinder. What you're really doing when you're wrapping a header and retaining that heat in there, you're making the engine think that the header is actually longer than it really is. Okay. So um, you, can, you can do some tuning with it. I mean, you're not going to feel it the seat of the pants, mm -hmm. but you will see it on a dyno sheet. Okay. And then what about, tell us about the different materials you have here. So then. different materials, we have um, our fiberglass based wrap. Um, this one's dyed black. Okay. Um, and our fiberglass, um, we don't use just regular fiberglass. It's a heat treated glass. And then we do a coating on the glass to help raise the temperature, operating temperature okay. of the glass. And then we have our titanium material which is not fiberglass based. Um, this is actually material um, that we use the yarn called basalt. And basalt's a mine mineral. So it, uh, it's basically lava rock. Okay. So they take the rock, they crush it, they melt it and strand it into a yarn. We take that and make products out of it. Okay. So it has a higher operating temperature than the glass does, um, about three to 400 degrees higher. Um, it's more supple um, okay. and it's a little easier to work with. Uh, you don't have to wet it when you're doing the wrap. On fiberglass wraps, we typically dampen the wrap a little bit. You don't want to soak it, but you want to get it damp. That makes it a little bit softer and easier to work with. Okay. Now yeah, we, you don't have to do on the titanium. No, we wrap. talked about this before. Um, you had mentioned to me like when you're wrapping a header, a lot of people don't do it properly. And if you don't do it right, you're kind of just throwing your money away. Yeah, there's, there's diff different ways of doing a header. Um, a lot of people think that if I wrap my header, it's going to rust out. Mm -hmm. um, that's one issue that we run into. And um, that years ago when they had a lot of the cheap headers out there that you'd buy for $100, yeah, you know, yeah. they'd rust out in two years. But the high quality steels mm -hmm. that they use nowadays, you don't really have that issue. Okay. But what you can still run into um, is holding too much heat into the pipe. So when we wrap a header, we recommend a quarter inch overlap. And the reason is if you overlap it more than that, you start to hold too much temperature into the pipe. Okay. And you can start to, to make the metal brittle. What I'm going to look at first when I see a header is the type of header it is. So this is a stainless steel header um, for obviously a V8, but the tubes are really close together on this header. So I always start at the bottom of the header and work my way up. Okay. So, um, so when you get to the top, you terminate with a, a stainless steel tie at the top and you just overwrap itself at the base. Now, would you go into the collector, like basically back to the sensor? How far back do you yeah, go? Well, it depends. So what I'm going to do here on this one, um, to start with, I'm going to wrap this tube right here because when I look at it, you've got a gap here, you've got a good gap here, it tightens up here. Okay. So I'll do a short wrap from the, the flange to somewhere around here okay. and I'll terminate that wrap. Then I'll back up and I'll start down here wrapping two headers okay. till I get to this point. Then I'll continue that one wrap around this tube up to the top. Okay. And then I would do the same thing um, on this side. I would wrap one pipe down to here and then I would start down here and wrap. Well, actually I would start on the collector like you were talking about. Okay. So I'd wrap from the back of the collector all the way around the four pipes and then split it off into two and then into one. Yeah, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to wrap this short pipe from here to here. So to do that, I got to get kind of an idea of how much wrap I'm going to use. Okay. So um, what I usually do is I just overlay it like this um, on the pipe itself to get an idea of about how much wrap I'm going to use okay. to get around it's it. Okay, basically simulate wrapping around it. Yeah, it's like I'm wrapping around it. And then I usually give myself an extra foot, foot and a half or so to go. Okay. And this wrap will fray pretty quickly um, when you cut it. Um, so in this application, um, sometimes I would take a piece of masking tape and put that over the top okay. um, just to keep it from fraying until I'm ready to take it off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of gather this up and we're going to start move the header here. We'll start wrapping it from this bottom tube here. Now what I do here, I'll trim off this to get that fray down. get that stuff out of the way. And I'll kind of fold it over and do like a, a fold like okay. that. And the reason I do that, this, this just helps it from fraying in the future. So 
I'll kind of pull it down to where I think I'm going to do my split. I wrap it and I start feeding it through and just wrapping it just like you do like a golf club or anything like that. So you start feeding it through and where you start you're going to have a little bit of an overlap you know right there. So what I do is I do that I pull it tight I'll come back in try to maintain my quarter inch overlap and as you go through a bend it, it you know you can't always maintain that quarter inch overlap. Just but keep it close. Just keep it close yeah but it's all about pressure so when you do it you just come through and it's you're always applying you're always keeping pressure on it. Okay. If you don't keep the pressure on, then it, it'll tend to walk away from you. And like you said with this, there's no reason to dampen this at all. No it won't help it grip nothing. Okay. Correct. Just with the fiberglass. So you kind of keep working your way around, just like you said, just like you would do a, a baseball bat or a golf club, you know, hockey stick, whatever, hockey stick whatever you're doing. And the, the whole key is tension. Just always keep tension on it. Now I get towards the end, and this particular header's got a square flange on it. Okay. So it makes it difficult to get really close. So I'm going to leave it down a little bit from the end of the pipe. So again, what I'll do is I've got a kind of a stringer here. We'll cut that off and then I'll fold this over in on itself again, just like I did the, the top part there. And we'll lay it in there. Now we're ready to, to put a stainless steel tie on it. So make sure everything's tucked in there and snugged up. So now to get these tight, these can be a challenge to get tight. Okay. So we came out with a tool. It's a, it's a really simple tool. It's nothing more than a, um, a quarter inch socket and we've cut a groove in the end of it. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's an inexpensive tool, but it's one of those lifesaver tools to have in your toolbox. So we put you it on. You actually turn it and then tighten it. Yeah, we turn it. So we get it in here. You put that through the slot. Like that. Then you just give it a turn. Slide it out. And you can either bend that over um, or you can cut it off, either way you want to do it. Okay. We, we make a silicone coating that when you spray it on the, the wraps, it, it gets into the fibers and kind of helps retain everything and keeps everything held together. Oh, so you would spray that on after you yeah. wrap it, not, a, okay. But I was thinking that you don't want to, that'd be like a coating before. Well, but you can, so that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm going to get at. Okay. On a stainless header like this, where it's a very smooth, slippery surface, mm -hmm. um, the wrap has a hard time adhering, you know, getting any traction on it, basically. Okay. So you can take this and spray the header down ahead of time, let it dry, oh, and so that'll make it grippier as well. That'll actually make putting the wrap on a little bit easier. Okay. So and then you can spray more on top of it. Then you can spray more on top, or you don't have to. You okay. can leave it the way it is. So again, now we're going to start going back, and this is where the planning comes into play. You know, so when you when you wrap the header, you know, I plan on doing this tube first. Now I want to do this tube. Then, you know, we would eventually move on to the next tube. Okay. So we're going to slide it back to where we get a, a tight fit there. I'm going to fold that back over and then we're going to start to wrap it. So again, we're going to go and take it over and we got to go through and feed this through. So we'll go back up here. Yeah. Got a lot of material yep. here. We'll feed it through as we come. We'll make sure we're not kinking it. it through like that and then once you get enough of it um, going down here it'll tighten up on itself and it'll be good to go pull it tight and just kind of rewrap it around so now we're starting to approach the other pipe that we wrapped and you'll see it'll start to overlap it and roll this pipe back down a little bit and now we'll start going to a single tube yeah, so we're just doing is a demonstration on how, you know, how to get the wrap done and the technique you would use. So you can see how you go from a single tube we started there to a dual tube. Okay. And then we would back up and we would wrap one of the top tubes here and then we'd back up and wrap the collector all the way forward doing four at a time. Now Mike, the wrap looks great. Now explain to me why you would choose the titanium over the black fiberglass. Like, is there a heat difference? What's yeah, the there's, a, there's a heat there? difference. There's three to four hundred degrees in maximum temperature difference that the titanium will take over the, the, the glass wrap. Okay. Um, so typically I would look at the application and if I had a turbo car or a supercharged car, something titanium I was putting sure on, all the way. titanium all the way. If I had a rat rod, or something like that, or I wanted the black look, um, and I specifically wanted that type of look, okay. you could go with the, the, the fiberglass. Um, the titanium's easier to work with. Uh, so you said the black you have to wet a little bit when you're installing with this, you just coat on, basically yeah, put it on. It's it gonna last a little longer. You know, typically on the, the black fiberglass wrap, 
Um, an average person will get three to four years out of a wrap. Okay. Uh, titanium, you could see four to five years out of it. Okay. So it holds up a little bit better over time. So a little easier to install, a little higher temperature, yeah. yep. holds up a little better as well. Yeah, it's just a step above material, you know. Um, it's for over the glass is all. Great. Well, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. And thanks no, no for showing problem. us how to properly wrap a header. Thanks.